January 9, 2018 Middle School Committee meeting. Um, to get the meeting started, we'll start with a roll call. Ms. Roach is absent this evening. Mr. Conroy? Here. Superintendent Gustafson? Here. Mr. Catalano? Here. Ms. Sol is expected to be here, so I think she'll just be tardy. Um, <laughs> teacher representative? Here. Student representative? Present. Uh, Jody, do we have anyone signed in for open session? We do not. Okay. Uh, we are thrilled to have, oh, sorry, before we start, I'm a little rusty. Um, the meeting's being recorded and can be viewed on Mondays at 7 p.m. on Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 37. All of the meeting videos are also posted to the Millis Public Schools website under the school committee section. Um, <coughs> we are very excited to have a big crew here this evening, which we will get to kind of first on our agenda. Um, but before we move to that, um, maybe we'll do uh, student update and teacher update, and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right. Um, I don't have much, but most of what I have to, I have to say uh, has to do with the girls' varsity track team. They recently won against Dedham and Bellingham, as well um, members of the team, Bethany Steiner, Catherine Malowitz, and Lucy Clayton have all qualified for states. And then the boys varsity track team has also uh, recently won against Bellingham. And then one more thing, um, there's a 3v3 ice hockey tournament. It's a fundraiser for outdoor pursuits. Um, the ice rinks were recently built uh, in the, the football stadium outside, and uh, we need to pay for them, though. So uh, the fundraiser go is going towards that. It's on January 20th. Um, teams of three, uh, it's $30 per team, and it's ages 14 plus. Thanks, Josh. I just wanted to let the town know that the rinks are open for people to use, um, and they are located on the football field. So the uh, Barnes and Noble Book Fair will be back February 9th and February 10th at the Bellingham Barnes and Noble store. Glide around the third and fourth graders are invited to join in the America's Battle for the Books. It started yesterday, and they are eligible to read book through March 8th, so they should probably get started. Uh, January 25th, grade four, we'll have a concert. And for the high school, um, March 7th, we're having our small school big conference career fair. And they are still looking for more volunteers that would be interested in sharing information with the high school students about careers. So any town residents or people that you might know that would be willing to come are welcome. Um, term two will end Friday, January 20th. and uh, term three will begin January 22nd. And there is a um, senior project going on. Rudy Casasbus is collecting new or gently used clothing, winter clothing, in support of the Vietnam Veterans of America. There's a box in the high school front office. <laughs> items can be dropped off. Uh, February 15th, the prom fashion show will happen between 7 and 9. And there's a college planning night February 1st here at the high school. Great. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that we have uh, many parents in the audience tonight. So for the small school big futures, if people are interested, um, I think it's, is it Marco Dickey and the? Yes, Marco okay. Dickey and, and um, Riley Stevens. Okay. And they do have a survey, I believe it's on a Google Doc, that they would like potential participants to fill out. But if you email them, um, they may also, they, they have a Twitter feed, which they may have information on as well. I okay. didn't um, remember to ask them that. But Great. I would, enc I would encourage anyone. Yeah. Um, it was a it was a excellent event last mm -hmm. year. So if anyone has the time that they could take for <coughs> taking a day to do that with the students, that would be right. And it's actually only, um, it's a half day that day. Oh, good. So it's only between 8 and 11 a.m., um, I believe. So it's not, it's not an entire day commitment. So <coughs> Thank you. Um, we only have one action item, so maybe we'll work through that, and then we will get to time and learning. For the consideration to approve the 1219, sorry, school committee meeting minutes. Madam Chair. Mr. Conroy. Uh, I make a motion to approve the December 19th meeting of the Miller School Committee. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded to approve the 12-19-17 school committee meeting minutes. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Madam Chair, <coughs> I'm pleased to um, introduce Maureen Knowlton, the principal of the middle school, who's here to uh, <coughs> speak a little bit about, and we have many, many students and teachers here to speak about our, some of our personalized learning initiatives at the middle school level. Spencer, uh, and this is my show called Spencer Sports Update that I've been working on in TV production class with Miss Mannion. And basically, what it is is every week I come in with a pre written script about the NFL, and I sit down at a table and just talk about what I've written, my thoughts, upcoming games, past games, stuff like that. Um, with the help of John and Ken as the director and audio director. So this, here's my website that last trimester I made with Mr. D, the tech teacher. And basically I just wanted to kind of do a, and like you unified art within a unified art to help out the, the show. So it's called Spencer Sports Update Online. And this is the home page where I, I just say what my show is. And here is a link to um, the playlist on Miller's Public Schools YouTube channel about, well, it, it's the playlist of all my videos. And here I have inserted all of the videos. And I would like to show you my most recent one that I actually uploaded today. So 
I have done over 10 shows. Um, this is the 12th. Yeah. This is the 12th. And so I do a couple other shows, such as Sam's Game Time, J's Art Show, Evan's NBA Update. Um, I've done a Rabble concert in the school auditorium. And I'm, I feel like I'm really passionate about this, and I love this entire audio director and um so basically what my role is is, is um every potential comic book of course prepared and um i'll just uh test his audio and uh make sure the audio levels are all good and then uh he just kind of follows it from there um i've really been happy to take all of these opportunities that i've been given such as go to the rabble concert and uh and do the audio for that um i've also been able to do multiple shows that um have been really fun to film and uh it's something that I really enjoy, and I uh, and it's something that I really am passionate about. Okay. Has a quick question. Yeah. What's a rabble concert? Oh, uh, so uh, it's basically um, this uh, singer uh, slash music musician who um, basically came in uh, to the school to talk about um, some different topics, and uh, he basically has had like shows on uh, songs on different shows and uh, such as well, and. Um, yeah, me, me, Kate, and Spencer did uh, the control room for that. Exciting. Yeah. Very cool. Nice work, guys. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Nice job. Oh, great. did a unit, we're doing a unit on civil rights. And so we learned some basic information as a class about the 50s and the early 60s and civil rights. And then we've ex been exploring the history of civil rights through music. <coughs> but they have then gone to the library and used uh, internet and however they want to to do research <coughs> on some aspects of civil rights that they found interesting. So the projects range in presentation and in topic.
Congress passed the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which banned racial discrimination in public spaces, page 100 in the Civil Rights Act. Another result is Congress passes the Voting Rights Act, outlined discriminatory Can you guys grab a mic microphone too when you have it? Hello? Hello? As long as it's on, it should work with the... It should have been on. It should be on. So I don't think that amplifies, but I do think it, it records. So I'm going to repeat that too for the taping purposes. So all of the videos that the classes did for the Civil Rights Project Hello. are on the school's YouTube channel. Yeah, they have a playlist so you can see some of the projects from last year as well. Okay, great. So there's a playlist so you can see this year's projects and some projects from last year as well. Thank you. And Danielle, can they get there from our website? I think so. Studio One. Thank you. Jackie was born near a farm near Kiowa, Georgia. He had a family that looked after him and Jackie's brother died in a coxident with a pitcher and the MLB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause Jackie is the coolest guy you'll ever see he even helped in the civil rights good jackie is the coolest guy you'll ever see he even helped in the civil rights people would say get out get out people would say get out get out but he took it like it was nothing at all, yeah? I'm gonna bring it out and he's gonna spit some fire. Yeah, we got Thanks, E. Jackie Robinson, the home run, beep, 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 yeah, that's yeah. Let's wait until the house goes, we'll tell you, tell you some facts, let's go. First, he got attracted to the MLB, to the Dodgers, and to the Red Sox, it was tough for him. People could give him some death threats, smash his car windows. Fisher could throw the ball at his face, and the office would call it a strike. Black people should be treated the same way as whites. Now I'm going to bring the mic back to E.
Cause Jackie is the coolest guy, coolest guy. you'll ever see. He even helped in the civil rights. <laughs> civil rights. Cause Jackie is the coolest guy you'll ever see. He even helped in the civil rights. People would say, get, get out, get out. People would say, get, get out, get, get out. Buddy took you like you're nothing at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great job, guys. Good job. I think I want an encore.
Today, Colin Kaepernick has won 12 awards in total, but he will be coming with death and penalty. Recent awards of the Ethan Monroe Courageous Advocate Award from ACLU and the other one which is called Elevator Mohammed Ali Legacy Award, which is the award that elevates actors who use their platform to bring about social change to account.com. Kaepernick is recognized for his civil actions but no team is having as a quarterback. In 11, the Taliban banned girls' education, so me and my father just continued to learn. <coughs> Did things get better or worse for you? Things were doing okay until one day I was on the bus ride to school and the Taliban stopped the bus and came aboard. No one said anything, but the man had asked for me by name and someone looked at me and got me a bus. Wow. That sounds like a very traumatic experience. I was flown to Birmingham, Queen Elizabeth Hospital in the morning. Okay, so let us talk about what you do now. I started a charity called Malala's Fund for Girls' Education. Yes, I've heard you raised over $7 million. Congrats. Yes, we started the charity in 2013. That's a lot of money for four years. Yes, it just shows how much people want to learn about girls' education and support it. That is amazing. I agree. We will be donating $10,000 to your college. Just yes. What does that mean? That means thank you in Urdu. At the end of our interview, we always ask our guests the, these two questions. So, what was the most important event in your opinion that happened? I believe that starting my charity helped a lot and raised a lot of awareness about what happens in Pakistan and countries around it. What was your um, most favorite part of Pakistan? I loved every single part about what I do and So we did an extra like part of research and we researched the Nobel Prize and we found some facts that we thought were interesting. So we found out that Malal was the youngest Nobel Peace Prize winner ever. She had won $1.4 million, but she had won it with Kali Sheep slash Shirazi, and she split the money with him. Um, the first Nobel Peace Prize was given out in 1901. People are awarded these prizes for the fields of physics, chemistry, literature, phys physiology, or medicine, and economic science. And Jean-Paul Sartre turned down the Nobel Peace Prize. Well, not the Nobel Peace Prize, but one of the Nobel Prizes because he had never taken an award for anything and he didn't want to start it. Good evening. Thanks wow. for uh, letting us come in and talk to you today. 
Uh, I'm Mr. Benham. I teach the, uh, the STEAM class, which has been a new UA this year for the uh, seventh graders. And these two brave girls have been nice enough to join me and present what they've been doing in class. Uh, the STEAM UA kind of came about really organically where we, uh, me and uh, the, one of the tech guys, Mr. Bush, who's in, in back of the, uh, there he is, uh, wanted to build a Street Fighter cabinet for my classroom. And brought a bunch of kids in on it, and the school was nice enough to give us some funds to buy parts for it. Uh, so we built this, you know, a, a Street Fighter arcade cabinet, and we decided that it would be a good, uh, uh, good incentive to give kids tokens when we saw good citizenship around the school. Um, it also runs off quarters, so if they use quarters, they can do that. And we've been donating the quarters to uh, uh, Toys for Tots and St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Uh, so we thought it was a good way to kind of bring the community into it. Uh, then they approached me to teach this as a UA this year, uh, which has been fantastic. So we've been doing the science, the technology, each game cabinet we do comes with a different set of problems that we kind of have to figure out uh, as a group. Uh, but I was told not to talk that long. So uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the students take over and, and they'll tell you exactly what a day is seen. Okay, so basically the show up every day. We come in and Mr. Benham will give us a warm up that it was really fun kind of to like get a warm up in and be ready to start. And so when we started, he would put different jobs up on the board and he would get to choose which one he wanted to do. We all like to kind of express our creativity through different ways. And it was really fun to get to choose because we all had different perspectives on the project and we all wanted to like put our part in in different ways. And usually it was either painting or like doing work together. Um, and it was just a really fun experience and something I've never done before. And if we did something good or something, we'll do a very bigger or we'll get some kind of reward or a token or play it in other games. So it was a really fun new way to have. So we had a lot of opportunities to do what we were interested in. So you could paint or cut out the actual design of the board. So you could do the electronics behind the game. And so we really got to do whatever we wanted or whatever we were interested in doing. We kind of did a small class as well. So our class kind of like bonded and we all just like put in our part and our um, game in the end was really really good. We haven't gotten to play it yet though, but we're excited to. So, um, so throughout the project we did a vlog and this is going to be our final grade. So basically my first part was this is my vlog and the first part of it is kind of like the beginning of the year and we had iPads with pictures on but this is kind of like the first part we did it and basically we just kind of got measurements and cut out boards and all that stuff just to get us started and um, I really have no pictures for this because I didn't have my iPad to take pictures, but here's one of the first like, big things we did. We assembled the power switch and we painted the wood. So, and then we picked, we chose a picture for the side of the game. We did it, the NBA's um, NBA game, jam. NBA Jam. So we put it on the side and we put the top and front together and me and another student, Ryan, we took some pictures of the other side. So we did Steph Curry on one side and LeBron James, the really famous player, and on the front we did the Celtics logo. Um, then this is the front, our like progress on like tracing out the front of the game. <coughs> this is when we were painting stuff on the side, and I, I was never really into painting kind of before this class, and I got to really like get into it, and it was really fun. I never really expected so much to like get into that, so that was cool. And then we we put the front like the front like the name on it in the front, and that was so cool to see because it was really coming together, and we had all the boards connected. And then this is when we started finishing up. We finished LeBron, and that's what he looked like. That was better background, but we finished LeBron, and we started painting Curry. Um, Mr. Benham went in with the highlights and he kind of really like emphasized the picture. And then we painted the back of the Steph, we painted the back of Steph blue for the Golden State Warriors. And then this is our really horrible 23 because that's the bronze number. We ended up redoing it because it looked really bad. And then we painted over the 23 because it didn't look right. And then when we finished, the um, Celtics logo when we were almost done. And it ended up looking really good in the end. Um, 
then we covered it up with twenty three and put a new one and it looks a lot better. Yeah. So we just put the borders around the machine so it looks like neater and that was we went over stuff as well because his face didn't look right and those were the borders around. And then we finished up and he ended up looking really good. We had a few problems throughout but we got through it and he ended up looking really, really good in the end. And then this is our last class. We all signed the back and we had a really small class but we had a lot of fun and this is something I didn't really like I didn't know about it and I was really curious when I heard first heard I had it. So and then this is our finished product and to do it by the classes we had, but I couldn't do the first few because I didn't have um, <coughs> my iPads then, but I tried to summarize them. Um, me and my partner filled out a packet determining the measurements of the Okay, so And we figured out the measurements of it, then we outlined the wood so we could cut it out and put it all together. Then we started outlining the images on the side of it. We connected the game together to actually get the shape of it out. Then we uh, outlined the drawing for the other side of the arcade game. The logo was put on the top and the Celtics logo was painted. We filled out more of the outlines of the basketball players and some electrical work was done. We did a lot of painting and a light switch got hooked up to the top of the game. The screen was put inside of the game and I started painting the Celtics logo at the time. So here are some pictures. This is the electrical on the front for the Celtics. That's um, LeBron James and Steph Curry in the new 23. That's the finished project. That's um, the back with all that information. And then that, since Mr. Benham gave out so many stickers throughout the whole thing, I put it all in a folder and I wanted to include that. When do you get to play it? We should play it soon. Yeah, anytime. Anytime they have a permanent Where do these live permanently? Yeah. Uh, right now they're up in my room. Uh, eventually I'm going to run out of room. So I've got other teachers. I've got a list of teachers who want one in there. <laughs> Excellent. Nice job. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. So fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to fall apart. Will you laugh? No, I will not. I would help you up and make sure you're not hurt. With the paperwork and the liability that we incur. Jody. Those are great. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. some fun, yeah. good That's things. Great. <laughs> I can sign it now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Sicardo. Thank you. As um, a lot of the personalized learning that happens in the Millis Public Schools, we uh, rely on or it's enhanced by the technology. So we have our Director of Digital, <coughs> Digital Learning and Innovation, 
Jen Starr this evening to speak to you about some of the things um, she's accomplished so far and some things for the future. Great. Yes, thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me here tonight, too. <coughs> Our audience got a little smaller, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as Nancy mentioned, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the things that we've been working on. Um, you know, coming into the district in August, my biggest focus was on getting to know the district, getting to know the teachers, getting to uh, review documents and look at policies and procedures that are in place, you know, the, pr the priorities of the district. Spent a lot of time meeting with teachers and with the tech team and PLC teams, finding out the kinds of things they're using, what they wish they could do, what works, what doesn't, um, their hopes and dreams. And um, the BAPL team and the PD committee, uh, something I've been active in finding out what kinds of professional development and other things that support personalized learning. As well, we've uh, established an its learning advisory group. We've been using its learning for a few years, and there was a lot of question around whether or not we would continue using its learning. Some teachers are very vested in it. So we put an advisory group together and had a survey and asked about their use of Google Classroom and its learning and kind of um, paving the way for what learning management system we'll use. So there is a lot of support for using it still. So that advisory group has been very um, helpful making those decisions. The new Clyde Brown, the new elementary school, has been another thing on our radar, of course. The learning space is there. And we've also, uh, the tech team has established a website review to look at the navigation and content on the website and sort of tweak some things. And now that it's up and running, what kinds of things do people want to see ha happening there? So um, we have a few initiatives that have gotten going since the school year started, a uh, couple of big ones. We are going to be working with School Dude Company for our IT ticketing system and also for our inventory and asset management, which is really huge. Um, Help Desk is the name of the IT ticketing system and Insight is the inventory and asset management. Uh, December we spent in training sessions with School Dude uh, setting up our, our uh, I, setting up the ticket system and um, getting the beginnings of the inventory system set up. January will it, it, the it's hosted by School Dude and their product literally crawls our network and pulls in the assets into the inventory, anything that's connected on our wireless network, and also the other pieces of inventory that we have we can put into this. So we'll be able to run reports and quickly see what we have for assets, where they are, who's using them, all that. February, we will go ahead and test out the ticketing system so that it's ready to pilot with middle school in March. And then April, May, we're hoping to be able to roll it to high school and then out to the elementary schools. So that's going to help us really organize our, our technology projects and um, keep on top of the kinds of requests that come in. This, uh, I think, will make people very excited. It's one of the first things I heard about when I came to the district. And I spent some time with the office staff. We had some webinars. We talked to PowerSchool. And there seems to be a tremendous amount of support. And I love the PowerSchool quote that's up here, that happy families, better data, and confidence and compliance. Uh, it, it, so many reasons. I, there's a memo in your packet that I gave to you, um, wrote to Nancy and to you guys about all of the, the possibilities. But the biggest piece is digitizing the registration materials and digitizing those back to school forms is going to improve our data quality and access. Um, it's going to certainly eliminate hours of manual data entry. And uh, as the office staff, staff will tell you, they get these stacks of papers and they have their checklists and they check it all off. And then they figure out which few families you know, are missing this or missing that. And then they have to hand notify or recopy. So one of the great things about this system is also is it can generate a report very quickly and see which families are missing something send a, a mass email out and have a link to the missing form. So hopefully we'll have a lot more buy-in for completing all of the forms. The timeline for that, uh, that's, a, that's a big implementation. Uh, there's a huge discovery process that will take place through the winter and early spring where we're gathering all of our forms. There's the possibility for making forms be um, multilingual so we can have certain forms that we want to have in other languages. So that whole process of digitizing the forms is very time consuming. We don't do that work. That's part of the process that PowerSchool does. And so we're hoping that by maybe late spring, early summer, we'll be trying out the online process with new families and that by the, uh, it will be ready for the fall for back to school, for the back to school forms. 
and then by next year at this time, kindergarten registration will be done online. So um, a less exciting but very necessary, the online assessments that are all starting to happen. This is our first year uh, doing the WIDA Access 2.0 testing for ELLs online. It started this morning and um, got through a few technical issues being a first time through, but it is being completed mostly in January right into February and it's being completed on Chromebooks. And then MCAS last year was the first year the district completed any MCAS testing online. This year all students grade three through eight will be completing it online. They'll be using iPads and Chromebooks. And the current plan is to share two carts between uh, Clyde Brown and the middle school because we don't have quite enough Chromebooks for sixth grade. So they're gonna be sharing and it's a two month testing window. So April and May will be very dedicated to MCAS. Just to <coughs> clarify, WIDA is for our ELL students, if you couldn't see the small print there. I guess it looks a lot smaller up there, sorry. <laughs> Um, we've been implementing Chromebooks this year. Ninth grade is one-to-one -one with Chromebooks. This is their first year with them. It's going very well. A lot of good feedback. The middle school got 60 new Chromebooks, and um, those went to fifth grade because fifth grade was one of the grade levels that needs to test online. And so they started out with fifth grade, and now the district made a decision to have everybody who could test online test online this year. HSA, uh, oh, Clyde Brown <coughs> also got 60 new Chromebooks, and one cart of those is in the new personalized learning lab, and the other cart is a shared cart among different grade levels. And HSA purchased seven additional Chromebooks for Clyde Brown, and they were very excited about that. And then finally, we're working on a plan um, to try to get one-to-one -one Chromebooks for grade six so that we won't have to share those carts among um, the, the middle school and elementary school, we need to acquire two additional carts. So um, that's something that we're working on. And then this is a, probably the most ambitious initiative going on right now, and that is that we want to develop a digital learning and innovation plan. Um, I came to the district looking for goals and technology goals or a technology plan and there are pieces of things, but no comprehensive and strategic plan in place. So that's something that we're diving right into. <clears throat> so again, we want it to be strategic. We want it something that's dynamic, it's ongoing, it's adapting to the times. There used to be a time where you could have a three-year plan and in three years you'd go back and look, but it really needs to be looked at annually and change with the times. You know, a few years ago, there weren't even iPads going online and now we have, we're taking tests on this. So so much changes so quickly. Everything that we do in the plan, of course, will be aligned with district goals and initiatives and aligned with state and national standards. And we would really like it to be representative of a collective vision. So the planning process will include uh, a lot of stakeholders. We're planning to do it in three phases. The first phase will collect some data from families, teachers, students, um, administrators uh, through surveys and spend some time reviewing that data. Then during phase two, we'll be developing goals. And during phase three, we'll put the plan together. And the planning team <coughs> that we're trying to recruit for starting now is going to meet just four evenings. So one in February, one March, one April, one May. We're still determining the dates for sure. And then a lot of work will be done collaboratively online and, and through email, shared documents. And we'll also have a digital learning and innovation plan website where we'll have resources and uh, all of different updates on how the planning process is going. So the planning team, the people we're trying to recruit, our staff, so admins, teachers, any staff, we will have some students from all grade levels. The students, the younger ones, will meet during the school day and get their input, and I, the older students would have the option of coming to those four meetings. And community members, I think, are a very important piece of this, so I'm hoping we'll get some community members, and we will help get the word out and have a way to sign up for that. Anyone interested can contact me directly through the email and phone number. And do you post these presentations? I can post this yeah. presentation so yep. the info will be there as well. And we'll, we can send it out on the list. Sir. Yep, okay, thank you. The plan right now is to have five goal areas and plan the goals around those. So we'll have something, a goal group uh, focusing on content, instruction, assessment, 
and that will include digital literacy and digital citizenship uh, in developing some curriculum around there. Another group will be looking at professional development and another will be looking at access and infrastructure and the nuts and bolts of how do we keep our, our network running and all of our, our um, devices in the hands of students and replacement plans. Next group would be looking at funding and how can we strategically fund the kinds of initiatives and plans that we are making. And then the last group will be looking at policies and procedures. Other, there are a lot of things in place that need to either shift in time or things have happened organically and there isn't really a policy or procedure in place for them. So clarifying a lot of that. And one of the big piece of that will be the data and data privacy, district data privacy. So um, kind of backing up a little bit, the team itself, each subgroup is going to have a chairperson and that chairperson will be doing a lot of the writing of goals along around their group rather than having a huge group trying to write all together. So um, just moving forward or to recap a little bit, we have a lot to finish up this year. So we're gonna finish developing and implementing this digital learning plan. Hopefully I have a draft timeline that was in your packet and it ends in June. <clears throat> so we're hoping to be able to share a plan with you in June that, and hopefully give you some updates along the way so that it's not a surprise that your input is, is important and val you know, valued in there. Um, we're complete implementing the IT ticketing and inventory um, system and the online registration again for the fall. We'll keep working with the BAFL team and keep working with the QD committee to make sure teachers are getting the support and the training and the kinds of um, things that they need to use our technology really well in support of personalized learning. The online assessment we will complete because we're, we're in, <laughs> we're doing that and it's working well. And um, the website updates, again, we did a review, we'll start with those changes, but we would like the technology plan to really inform more changes there and we'll continue working um, Todd Brown and the learning space is there. So if you have any questions, this is the first time I've had a chance to sit with you, so. I have one actually. Mm -hmm. um, on School Dudes, so you mentioned that it picks up the devices that are on the wireless network. Mm -hmm. Does that, will that pick up like student um, cell phones or visitor cell phones if they're on the wireless network? No, it's, it's limited to, it won't pick up the phones and it won't pick up the iPads. Okay. So the iPads we are managing through our mobile device management system and that inventory can be brought in. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it, it picks up Chromebooks. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. That was my only question. Yeah. Um, <coughs> on the, with those groups and, and when we're reaching out to the community and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. As we're laying out, I mean, this is, as I look at the goals, it's a lot of, if it's related to professional development, if it's related to kind of teaching, what exactly inviting parents or, or general Take community members mm -hmm. into a work group that they may or may not. Just, I just think there needs to probably be some definition of mm -hmm. if there are specific skill sets that we're looking for um, and also specific responsibilities of these groups. And the reality is if we're talking about policies, well, we set policies. Yep. You know, so they mm -hmm. would, any policy would have to come to us for yes. formal approval, which I, I know, but if we invite the math community in if they think that they, we just need to make sure we have I, I agree and I, that was one of the reasons why having subgroup chairs would be an important piece of that because those people would be for people who are highly qualified to be talking about goals in those areas so <coughs> the person on the professional development subgroup would certainly have a strong background in professional development and um, I would hope that somebody who is familiar with the policies and procedures in NOAA schools would want to be part of that subgroup and that we leave that and ultimately the school committee and the superintendent have a you know say in how we do this so yeah. but I, I, I do think involving people is great I just think yeah. we need to make sure 
And just to clarify on that too, those the larger group meetings are open for people to talk and say what they want to say and give their input to those areas. And if they have a particular interest, offer their thoughts in that area. And then the, that smaller work group will be five subgroup chairs, myself, and maybe some admins who will be able <coughs> to sit and really formulate the goals using that input. Yeah. So. so <coughs> Just to clarify, because uh, a lot has come out, a lot has changed, <coughs> and students have access to their technology 24-7, so yes, there's definitely. Other questions? Cool. Thank you. Thank you Thanks so, so much. much. Thank you very much. Anything else for your no, for the superintendent's report? Thank you. Okay. Um, for subcommittee reports, the elementary school building committee. Um, <clears throat> since last we met, uh, there was a a little bit of a work stoppage due to the cold weather. Um, so today, I think after a probably a four day hiatus, they um, started up some some of the equipment again. And as we get back into the <coughs> warmer weather, they'll, they'll resume work right behind us. Um, and there's been a lot of activity regarding kind of early bid package and construction meetings and um, everything is still on track, on schedule. Uh, there were a lot of interested parties regarding the exterior of the building. So a couple of weeks ago, maybe even last week, uh, we met, to, the building committee met just to finalize what the exterior look would be and materials to be used for that. So I think there, um, you know, everything keeps moving along. Um, one of the items that we actually, we won't talk about tonight, but I'll just raise it because it'll be on the next meeting's agenda, is there's been some discussion around the potential for, you know, will there be a discussion around naming the school. What's the new school's name going to be? So we'll have it on our agenda for the next meeting to have an initial discussion about that. Um, so that is it. Old business, new business? Anything? Okay, correspondence. Correspondence in your packet. Uh, you have a, a thank you letter to Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Stephen Cassidy uh, to thank the Stephen and Nancy Cassidy Family Foundation for the generous donation that allowed the upgrade to the sound system in the middle high school gym, which was um, in full in full force this evening yes. for the for the game. <laughs> Um, it includes two wireless microphones, um, gives us the capacity to play music and have announcements simultaneously without interference between them. Uh, the value of this upgrade is over $2,700, and we thank very much um, the Cassidy Family Foundation. Yes, it was a wonderful addition to tonight's game and re very fun at halftime. Yeah. So, and got a lot of um, positive comments from the crowd. Okay. Everyone was very pleased, so thank you very much to them. Uh, we had scheduled a working session to talk about capital planning. Unfortunately, um, Carrie Roach, who is spearheading that effort, um, wasn't able to attend tonight, so we're going to defer that to the next meeting. Um, so we will take a roll call vote to adjourn to executive session, not to return to open session. Sure. Mr. Conroy. Second. It's been moved and seconded to move to executive session. All those in uh, further discussion? All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Oh, roll call vote, sorry. Um, Mr. Conroy. Aye. Mr. Catalano. Aye. Ms. Sol. Aye. I'm an aye. I don't know if I have to do that. Um, all right, so we will adjourn not to return to executive session, and we will be back for meeting on the 16th or the 23rd? We moved this one. Right, out one and kept it. Um, okay. If you wish. I mean, okay. we can, we yeah. can move it. Uh, no, I just want to check uh, ESPC, that's all. Yeah. I forget what it is. I think okay. it's the 16th. I think it is, too, because I thought we were the 23rd. Um, but we, okay. we'll, we'll talk about that outside. We can outside. certainly move it. All right. Thank you very much.